Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today on Thursday, August 4th, 2022. It's about 3.37 Eastern Time PM as I speak, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I pray you're having an amazing day as I am. It is my last day of 10-hour days for the summer. Back to the normal routine of eights next week, but praise God for having a job. Amen. Uh, but guys, uh, it's going to be a good one today. I went ahead and I read our study scriptures again in advance. Uh, something the Lord just started putting on me, I, I believe, yesterday. And it's just, uh, this is good stuff. It's good stuff today, guys. Um, but our title today is When We're Let Down. Not if, when we're let down. I believe every one of us has been let down before. And our study scriptures, please go back and read this. It's it's beautiful. It's 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 33 through 50. And our lead all verse is 1 Samuel 17, verse 47. And the word of God says, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Amen. I believe that was David speaking, but that's why we got to go back and meditate on these scriptures. And our author today, Dennis Fisher, goes on to write, on August 4th, 1991, so 30, oh, 31 years ago, uh, my math. yeah, 31 years ago, the MTS Oceanos cruise ship, which is in the background there, guys, ran into a terrible storm off the coast of South Africa. When the ship began to sink, the captain and his officers abandoned ship without telling anyone. That's like a big, I thought the captain went down with the ship. Anyway. Uh, passenger Moss Hills, a British mu musician, noticed that something wasn't right and sent out a Mayday signal. Then Moss, his wife Tracy, and other entertainers on board organized a safe evacuation of all passengers onto rescue helicopters. Praise God for you, Moss. Sometimes people we look to for leadership let us down. Let me repeat that. Sometimes people we look to for leadership let us down. When King Saul and his officers faced the belligerent insults of the Philistine giant Goliath, they responded with fear and timidity. And that's 1 Samuel 17, 11. But, but a young boy, small guy too, I believe he was, uh, named David had faith in God which transformed his perspective on this threat. David said to Goliath, <laughs> man, praise God, David. David said to Goliath, you come against me with a sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Yes, indeed. Uh, David defeated the enemy and turned the tide of battle. Guys, please go back and read that st the study scriptures today. It just, uh, I did, and man, it just gives you a good, feel-good feeling right down to your core. Um, when others let us down, God may be calling us to provide leadership in his strength and for his honor. That's a good part right there to end with. Uh, guys, yeah, I'm pretty confident. I'm I'm almost 110% positive. Everybody, every one of us, myself included, anybody watching this video, you have been let down at some point in your life. Maybe you feel like you're continually being let down. Well, that's very possible. Um, but our study scriptures here and what our author's talking about, I mean, look at the ship behind me. I always thought it was like the, the carnal rule that if your ship goes down, the captain goes down with it. Well, he didn't. He bailed. He beat feet. Didn't even try to send an alarm or alert a message or nothing to the passengers. He was just going to let them go down with the ship and die to, to, to meet their demise. That's, I don't know what happened with the story, what happened that, I'm pretty sure that captain is no longer allowed to uh, pilot a ship or whatever they call it. Uh, I, would, I would hope to God he's not allowed to be a captain of the ship. But um, you look at this passenger, Moss Hills, who noticed that there's something wrong, and he's the one that stood up and took control over and actually save these people it ties right in with what David did. I mean, David, he had already uh, defeated lions and bears that were attacking the flock, the sheep. That This is in our study scriptures. 
And uh, so th to him, that was nothing compared to a two two legged man. You know, yeah, Goliath was a giant. I think seven foot tall, nine foot, ten foot. I forget how tall. He's just a tall man. Just a, just a tall man. That's all he was. Nothing more, nothing less. And they, that's how David saw it. Everybody else saw him as a giant, but um, David knew that God God was on his side. Saul even gave uh, gave David some of his equipment: his helmet, his sword, or maybe a shield. I think. And uh, so, uh, David tried it out, and he's like, you know, I, I don't need this stuff. I don't need this stuff. If God is fighting this battle for me, all my faith and trust and hope is in God. I already know how this is going to turn out. I already know. Um, that I mean, David has some bold confidence right there, guys. That's just that the heart of David right there facing that giant and killed him with a stone. I mean, landed that shot. He flung the stone. I believe God guided it. He aimed it. Uh, you know, God directed that stone to land exactly where it had. And then the story ends, you know, David went up, took a live sword and chopped his head off. And, and victory was theirs, you know, in the name of Jesus. I mean, uh, or, I'm sorry, it wasn't the name of Jesus then, uh, but in the name of the Lord Almighty. But uh, today, you know, we we have victory in the name of Jesus. And you, you face things every day. We all do struggles, battles, big or small, whatever they are. But if you know God is with you and goes before you, and he's in every battle and every battle belongs to the Lord. Uh, Exodus 14, 14, you know, the, the, the Lord will fight your battles. All you got to do is, is stay still, you know, just be calm. That doesn't mean be stagnant and just sit there with your hands in your pockets. But, you know, there's, we got to really understand scripture, guys, and what God's talking to us. That's why it's so important to get in the word. But again, please, this is just a beautiful one. Um, and when you face these things, like our author's saying here at the end, you know, these battles, and we actually uh, discussed it last night on our Bible study, me and my brother Dave, you know, a lot of times these battles, these tribulations, these uh, disappointments in life sometimes, sometimes that is God's training and correction on you, and it's all out of love. There is so much scripture. I wish I had time today to go back over what we read last night. But man, some of these things that we face, guys, that is God speaking directly to you, building you up getting you where he wants you to be for his glory. So guys, that is such a huge honor and blessing to be loved by God that much to have these tribulations to be let down. It's actually a blessing. And there's so much scripture that would back that up. So if you're completely trusting in God, knowing he's got a hold of you and he's going to fight your battles for you, 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 we can walk around just like, just like David, man, with our chest sticking out. No, no giant, no giant is bigger than our God guys. So so when you're let down, just uh, think of this captain of the ship. Think about the passenger, that what well, he stood up. And then, uh, you know, again, the most important part, look at Saul and David and Goliath and that whole scene in our study scriptures. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this Thursday. And until tomorrow, August the 5th, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord has to say tomorrow. God bless you guys. I love you all.